Hey folks, David here. I'm going to do a video on uh, LEDs and uh, installing them in your model trains. And I'm going to talk about the different uses, uh, how to wire them, why would you put LEDs in your model trains, and different things like that. Um, I wanted to do this video a long time ago, and I'm finally getting around to it. Um, why would you use LEDs in your model trains? Well, they're cheaper. Um, they might be brighter. Uh, sometimes it's hard to find the right replacement bulb. Um, or maybe it didn't have any lights in it at all and you just want to add it in there. Um, you can also put them in your cabooses, your rolling stock, things like that. Um, there's also using them to light up houses and things and that's a whole different uh, topic that we can talk about. But basically I'm going to show you uh, about LEDs and how to wire them. So there are a few things that you need to know. Okay. I have a variety of LEDs here. As you can see, they come in different colors and shapes and sizes. Um, generally, they come in red, your amber, your green, your white, and they also have blue. I don't have any blue ones. So those are generally your four colors. And then there is, that's what's called a, uh, a five millimeter. And then the red one is a three millimeter. So those are your kind of standard ones there and you can see this guy here is flat so that's a little bit different that one's kind of flat on the bottom and then the top of it's round so those are kind of used for uh, electronics equipment you know front panel type indicators that kind of thing so those are your different sizes I mean, generally for your, your locomotives and stuff, you, you're going to use white ones. But um, you might use, you know, you might want to put a colored LED in your train. That's fine, too. You can do that. So we have all these different types or sizes and shapes of LEDs. The one thing that is the same about all of them is they have a positive and a negative lead on them. Which means if you wire them up backwards, you're going to burn them up. So when you use them, you have to make sure that they're wired so that they don't get wired backwards and burn up. So where the problem is with your DC trains is if you have positive on one side of the track, negative on the other side of the track, that's fine. Then you decide you want to run the train in reverse and this is positive and that's negative, you're gonna burn up your LED. So one way to prevent that is with a bridge rectifier. Now, this is a bridge rectifier. That's a bridge rectifier. That's a bridge rectifier. They look different, but they all do the same function. A bridge rectifier is most commonly used in power supplies to convert AC current to DC. It it's also handy for using in model trains because of how it works. So it constantly keeps the positive positive and the negative negative. Because, of course, like we were saying, that'll change polarities. So, what's a bridge rectifier? A bridge rectifier is basically made up of four diodes. And you can see that's a diode and it's got a white line on one end. So, this is a schematic diagram, that's a physical diagram. So you have a negative and a positive side to a diode. The negative side being the cathode, positive side being the anode. Don't worry about that, just positive and negative. And the part with the white line on it there is the negative side. So it only conducts electricity in one direction. It won't conduct electricity the other way. In other words, if you made this positive and that negative, nothing would happen, it won't do anything. So you take four of these and you put them together and with AC coming in where it changes polarity, what happens is when this is the positive side, your current's gonna go this way. If that's negative, then your current is going to go that way. Did I say that right? Yes, negative to positive. So the output, this lead here on your output is always going to be positive and this lead is always going to be negative no matter what the input is and that's the same as 
alternating DC. In other words, this side is positive and you're getting positive out here. But what happens if you flip those? Still works the same. The output is still the same. So, like I said, it has two inputs. It's kind of hard to see, but there's two little squiggly marks on there that look like this. Okay, that, that's a symbol for AC current, or AC voltage. So they have two squiggly lines here for your input, and then it has a positive there that's the output, which is always positive, no matter what, and it has a little notch in it there. And then this side is always negative. So no matter whether this input's positive or negative, this output is always positive, and that is always negative, okay? And you see the same thing on here. That would always be positive, and that's always negative. And then these are your alternating inputs, either alternating DC or AC, whatever. And the same thing on this guy. You can't see this quite as well. In other words, right here and right here are the little squiggly lines. And up top is a positive sign, so which means that these two leads here are your inputs that can be either AC or alternating DC and that's your positive output and that is always 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 positive okay so that's how you would do that so like I was explaining you have a positive and a negative so you just simply put your LED the positive lead here on your positive lead of your bridge rectifier doink and that's all you have to do, except for one thing. You have to put a resistor in here, or else you're gonna burn up your LED. Um, if you're using more than the rated voltage. In other words, LEDs are generally 1.5 volts to like say three and a half volts is what they're rated at, depending on what you have. So if you're using a 12 volt power supply, that's way too much and you're going to burn up your LED. So you have to put a resistor in there. So how much resistance do you need to put in there? Well, I already did this. But I'm going to do it again. Oh, here we go. I already did this formula here. So there's something called Ohm's Law. Resistance equals the voltage divided by the current. And it is also the same as the voltage equals the resistance times the current. So I is current, R is resistance, E is voltage. Okay, either way you cook it, okay? So let's say we're going to have a 12 volt power supply and we're gonna have a LED that's rated at 1.5 volts Okay So what we need to do is take your 12 volt power supply minus the 1.5 and Then divide that by the current. Oh one thing that I missed Generally LEDs use about 20 milliamps So 20 milliamps Is the same as 0 0.02 amps that's how much current they draw. So what you would do is put 0 0.02 here to find the resistance that you need for your LED. So basically then you would have, what I say, 10.5 volts divided by 0 0.02, which equals 525 ohms. So that's a resistor there. I'm not going to get into the resistor color code, but um, so these are resistors. So you would need about 525 ohms. So you don't have to be exactly at that. And you'll see the differences in color when you use different resistances. In other words, the, the color of the light bulb will kind of change or the LED will change. But basically if you do 500 to a thousand actually you can use like 300 ohms so we're just going to say from experience 300 to 1000 
ohms for your resistor will work, okay? Ohms. Doink. Okay. So that's how you come up with the resistance on that. Bridge rectifiers are basically made up of four diodes. So if you don't have a bridge rectifier, you can simply get four of these diodes and wire them up just like that and it'll work. However, these are very easy to find. Any type of electronic equipment that you plug into the wall, like an alarm clock, any, any radios, you know, household items that you plug into the wall, they're going to have a bridge rectifier in them. These guys here, I think I bought uh, 25 of them in a package. I paid, uh, I'm going to say about 40 cents a piece at that. I know I wrote it down somewhere what I paid for these. So, in the end, if you want to use an LED in your DC train, wire it up, you know, put your positive on your positive and negative on your negative. Make sure you... In, you can't see inside my shrink tubing here is a, is a resistor right there. And I soldered it to that, to the uh, bridge rectifier. And then your inputs here. It doesn't matter which one's positive or negative. So I use something like white or yellow. So I know that that's my input and they're both the same. So it doesn't matter. This is um, like four and a half volts. And here there's just three double A batteries in here. So if I simply put this here. Put that there, turn that on, boom, there's your LED. And then if I were to reverse the polarity, that one over there, this one over here, still works just the same, no big deal. Okay, so that's four and a half volts. That one looks a little bit bluish. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, what if I use a 12 volt power supply? So remember, that's four and a half. This is a little 12 volt power supply that I use for testing uh, trains, things like that. It's just a handy 12 volt power supply that I use. So plug that in. And again, oh, little clips here. I love these little spring clips. That we don't need. So this side is negative, that side's positive. And there you go. You see it's a little bit brighter. If I twist them around, works just fine. No problem. Okay, so that's using a bridge rectifier for your LEDs in your trains. So it doesn't matter what the polarity is. So what you can do, uh, I'm using, you know, this 4.5 volt, I got the 12 volt. You can use one of these guys here if you're just testing things. Um, they're really handy. Remember, let's see, on the right is my negative. So these are handy because they're easy to, uh, you know, give it a quick test there. Here, this one's uh, kind of got a trick to it. Watch this. I always forget about this one. It's clear, but yet it shines red. Um, and the thing is, if you use one of these little batteries, you're less likely to burn out the LEDs while you're messing around with them. Let's see this one here. It's got some pretty short leads. So that side's negative. Doink. There we go. So this is a quick, handy way to test things. Oh, I got to show you this one thing. Here we go. This one's pretty cool. So that side's positive and that side's negative. And you think it's clear, but it's not. But yet that one changes color. So I wanted to make another one of these uh, searchlight cars um, and put one of those in it for Christmas. Um, so you've seen, you've probably seen my searchlight car here. And basically, instead of using track power, I put three of these little batteries in here. Now, so that equals four and a half volts. So you don't really need a resistor in there. So there's, there's no resistor in it. It's not using track power, just 
towers off of these three guys. Like that. Thank. Always wanted to make one of these because the other ones use track power and it slows the train down. That's why I like this. So I'm going to make another one of these and put that uh, color changing LED in there. So I have a couple of these that I pre-wired and then, you know, while I'm sitting here, I'll just wire up a couple of these, solder them together, put some shrink tubing on them. And then when I need them, I have them. Now there is something a little bit different here that we're going to talk about. And these two guys in particular, I have a whole package. Of, I think I bought a hundred of them. These are from Eva model. And that what's different about these is these can be used with AC without the bridge rectifier. In other words, if you're using, if you run uh, Lionel O scale or something, and you're using regular LEDs, you would want to use the bridge rectifier. Or you can use these guys. If you're using these for DC, you still have to make sure that you have the polarity correct or you're going to burn it up. But basically, if you're going to use these in your uh, Lionel or your O gauge stuff that uses AC, you put a 1K ohm resistor because uh, that's usually running at about 18 volts or closer to 18 volts. So you're going to use a 1000 ohm resistor and then you can put that in your Lionel just like that and you don't need the bridge rectifier. Now one thing that happens is, or one thing that could happen is just using this off of AC as your train goes around and you, if you have gaps in your track or you know it's a dirty track, it, it'll still flicker a little bit. If you use the bridge rectifier, you'll have a more steady input on here and you'll see less flicker. But I'll have to show you upstairs on one of the trains. I have a, uh, a bunk car on my uh, Lionel and has lights in it and they kind of flicker. But actually to me, that looks more realistic. So that's, you know, just how I feel about it. But, uh, oh, I know one other thing we were talking about. So depending on the voltage, that kind of has a little bit of a bluish tint. And that's caused by whatever the, uh, the phosphorus they use to coat this to cause it to light. Um, this guy here... See, I do have to be careful if I wire this backwards, it'll burn up. There we go. So if you look at this one, that's a little bit more yellowish, which is kind of a nicer color. So it depends. You have to experiment with the uh, the voltages and different types of LEDs. So this, this one here is one that's rated for AC and uh or you can use it with dc if you wire it correctly but you can see that one's a little bit yellower and then the other one's kind of more of a bluish and i have to research that a little bit more as far as what different colors and types there are so here's a diagram of physically wiring it basically where's this here so that's basically showing this so you have your two alternating inputs and then your positive and negative which is basically what the top of that looks like and also like one of these guys here that's how that looks like to resistor okay so you're using 300 to 1000 ohms depending on your power supply and your brightness and you want to make sure that you wire it with the positive lead on the positive on the bridge rectifier. One other thing I can show you, if you can see this. This is how you would do directional lighting. In other words, if you wanted an LED to light in just one direction, you can use basically just these diodes here and wire them in like this. And still you'd use a 300 to 500 or 600 ohm resistor in here. And basically, if the train's going this direction, this LED will light. If the train's going this direction, that LED will light. So that's how that's wired. 
I basically made up this drawing for a GG1. If you have a GG1, you'll notice that the lights change depending on which direction it goes. In other words, they have lights at both ends. It goes one way, that light lights up. It goes the other way, the other one lights up. And you can do that with LEDs in your GG1, just the same. Here are a couple different uh, engines that I put LED lights in. And uh, this is a Tyco, that's a Tyco, and this is an American Flyer. So I'll show you what they look like and uh, we check them out. This one's interesting. Yeah, because I don't even have power on here. I mean, there's got to be just enough power for that to light. As a matter of fact, yeah, it's showing zero volts. I don't understand. Static electricity? I don't know. Okay. Now let's get a better view of this. Okay. So that is the American Flyer. Here's the GG1. Uh, this GG1 here, I put the directional lighting in it. But basically two diodes in there so that it, you know, only one light turns on depending on which direction it goes. So we go this way, that light lights up. And I'll just move the camera so you know I'm not doing any camera tricks. Go to reverse. I'm going to do that again. see I'm going forward and the one in the back is not on put it reverse and that one turns on so here's a uh, Lionel bunk car and a caboose this one has LEDs this one has regular incandescent bulbs so let's put some power to it let me show you so this has the incandescent bulbs and we're talking about flicker and you know what that kind of doesn't bother me because cars used to actually flicker like that as they were on the track so I don't know if I'm going to do anything with that or not. Now this guy has two LED bulbs in there. And that's pretty cool. It has a little bit of a blue tint to it, like uh, like DHO. We're gonna try an experiment with this and see what happens here. So let me find my screwdriver. Okay, so I made this little circuit board just to make it easier. And I 3D printed these little LED sockets. And the resistor here is just uh, screwdrivered in his little contacts in there. So in case I want to change the value. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to change these out for the other LEDs. I have these uh, EVA model LEDs. 
Now I did not put a resistor in line with these, but there's already one on the board. So I'm just gonna wire them in here and see how they look. I was going to replace both of these LEDs and then I thought, well, you know what? I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna put one of the, this is an AC LED, okay? But since I'm using the bridge rectifier, it's actually DC and you actually have to have, make sure that you have the positive, you have to make sure that you have the positive connected to the positive. And this is the one that was in there. I'm just leaving it there so we can see the difference on these. So you can kind of see that these ones are a little bit more yellowish and that one's kind of bluish. Let me get a better look here. Let's see if we can hold that in place. There we go. I just put pieces of double sticky tape in here. Well, that guy's pretty bright. Let's see what it looks like with the uh, the cover on it. That almost looks too bright. Well, actually, it's probably just sitting up higher. Maybe if it was down lower. So anyhow, that's what that looks like. <clears throat> so, let me know what you think. Did you learn anything? Does it look like something you might try? Have you ever put LEDs in the train? Uh, are you going to? Um, if you have any questions, comments, let me know. I'd like to hear from you. All right. Thank you for watching.